Hello and welcome to another edition of the Get Growing Weekly Work Session with Get Oiling. I'm Coach Ashley, joined today by founder of Get Oiling, Greg Killine. Hey, Greg. Hello, everyone. We're really glad you're here today. We are excited to have you here today. We're also excited to be joined by the incredible Julian Collin from our team. What's up, you guys? What's up? <laughs> Thrilled to have you here. So today we're going to be talking about something very important that you may or may not have thought about yet. Uh, it may be something that when you discover that you need to uh, look into it, you're already kind of freaking out. And that is when you find out that something has maybe gone to spam, or if you get an error message saying that your message, maybe a text message, could it be delivered for some reason or another? Now, there are other trainings that you can find, of course, on our channel, uh, where we get into sort of the uh, the mechanics of marketing and sort of what you include in the emails and the text and things like that that you send. And this definitely falls into that category. But today we want to lighten your load just a little bit more and show you how you can take this admittedly complicated thing and make it a bit easier by using AI, which we have included with your Get Oiling system. So what we're going to be focusing on today is improving how your messages that you send out to your people land in the inboxes or on the phones of the people that you're sending them to. And uh, we do have some slides that we're going to get into today. And then of course, we'll open the floor to work together and uh, answer your questions. So if you have those, definitely do, if, even if they have nothing to do with today's topic, put those into the Q&A uh, so we can uh, get to those with you. Also head over into the chat. Let us know where you are in the world and what you are hoping to learn today. Uh, we are always so excited to see you here. And we do hope you're having a gorgeous, Happy day, healthy day, wherever you are. We're gonna hop out a video and get into our slides for today. And then we will get into our questions and any kind of demonstrations that you might like to see. So again, as promised, today we're talking about improving how our stuff lands with our people. So improving deliverability of our email and text using the Write with AI feature in Get Oiling. All right, so what we'll get into today is first, how we improve our deliverability, and that's in text and email. And then we'll talk, of course, about how to use AI to make it easy for you, because this is a really important topic for you to have some grasp of knowledge about, but you don't need to know everything to do this well because you've got AI included with Get Oiling. So of course, again, as always, we get into live help and Q&A here. This is a live work session. It's designed to be a place for us to work together, move through any of the blocks or issues that you may be facing so that you can get on with your business. So if you have any questions, like I mentioned before, please do go ahead and add those to the Q&A, uh, whether they're about today's topic or something completely different. We do keep space on this call to work together on anything that you would like to work on live. If you are watching this as a replay, you can go to getoiling.com slash weekly work session to get on this list. So you'll know what we will be sharing with you next. And you'll be the first to receive resources when we make them. And if you would like one-on-one -on -one help on a live call and you would like to schedule that just to make sure sometimes these calls can get really full and really busy and you want to make sure that you have dedicated time to sit down with us to work through whatever it is you're working on, whether you're just getting started or you have something more complicated that you're working on and you want to make sure that we can sit down and work on it one-on-one, -on -one, you can do that. It's totally free. You can go to getoiling.com slash website review. And if you are wanting to just hand some of this stuff off to somebody to get it done for you, go to getoiling.com slash concierge and you can learn more about our incredible team that works with people just like you to get your website done, to build your member area, uh, to help you hands-on whatever that might be, you can head over there and learn more about how we can help. All right. So we know, we know, we see you, you work hard to understand this stuff and to get things done. If you're sending newsletters or if you're writing a campaign to welcome your new customers, uh, or if you are hosting workshops and you're putting all of the pieces and the finishing touches together so that that exact experience that you want your customer or future customer to have is something that goes off without a hitch. You put a lot of work into the stuff that you do. So the last thing we want to see is your hard work not landing where it's intended. Your emails maybe landing in the promotions or the spam folder, right? Your text messages uh, maybe not sending at all, right? We don't want to see that happen to you. So there's 
first things first, I think it's really important to acknowledge here that there's a lot that can be covered around this topic. There's a lot of nuance. There's a lot of um, high level expertise out there uh, around sort of influence and, and why people open things and how to get people to more likely open things, your audience specifically. There's a lot of fine tuning that you can do. It's a lot of that, but unless you're somebody who set out to become a guru of marketing, becoming an expert in this stuff is probably not on your to-do list. And to be perfectly honest, we don't believe that it ought to be for you. You don't have to know everything to get good work done. And a good reason why is because we have AI, right? So we want to make sure that you're able to stay out of spam. So how do we do that? First things first, we're going to we're going to go through a couple of steps that you need to perform that we highly recommend that you go over um, and have completed first. And then we're going to leave most of the rest of the work to AI, right? The guidelines that you need to kind of stay within, it's going to help you do that. But there are a few things, sort of concrete things that you're going to want to get done first. So first things first. And this is going to pertain specifically uh, to sending email. You're going to want to get yourself a domain name for your website. When you get started with Get Oiling, you're going to have a getoiling.com slash whatever name you choose, right? And that is a replicated website. And you know what? You can get started and use that and it works beautifully for you. But when you want to start getting into email marketing and building authority for your brand online, or if again, you want to just keep the Get Oiling theme, but you want to make sure that your emails land where you want them to land and you have higher control over this, you want to make sure you get your own website name, okay? Then you want to make sure you have an email address that's on your domain. So not your name or your business name at Hotmail or Gmail or Yahoo or whatever. You want to have a name at your domain name.com or .net or whatever you choose. Okay. These are important things that need to be seen sort of on the back end um, for the, the email providers for them to see that you're someone who is reputable and credible and for you to be able to build your own authority and reputation with what you send. Okay. So these are really the first two important things you need to do in particular for email. Now you can have our team help you with this. You can just reach out to support at getoiling.com. We can help you get all of this figured out. And when you do, our team can actually set up for free. This is a complimentary thing, set up a custom mail server for you. And there's a little magic that our friend Colin here can work on the back end as well to skyrocket your avail uh, your deliverability of your emails with some pretty important critical steps that need to take place on the back end. And again, it's it's not something that takes a lot of time. And this is something that our team is happy to do for you, setting up the stuff on the back end. But you do need to get in touch with us about setting up a domain name and getting an email address on that domain if you don't have these already. Uh, then the next thing you want to make sure of is that you have your contact information correct on your website. And one of the important things that you're going to want to put here is, is your own name, right? Who you're sending from. That's going to make a big difference in your deliverability. When you send mail and it's coming from a name that is not yours, uh, it's not going to deliver as well. And that's for a couple of reasons. Uh, one of them is, is sort of a technical authority piece where the, the mail... Um, delivery systems are concerned, but it's also psychologically for the person you're sending it to, people are more likely to open emails from people than they are from businesses. We'll typically let businesses land in our promotions folder, for instance, and you actually have a higher chance of being delivered with the messages that you're sending if you are person to person and it's showing up that way, okay? And then also, and this pertains to your texting, consider getting your own Get Oiling phone number, all right? Uh, if you don't have this yet, it's simple to set up. And of course, if you want to be engaging in text marketing, you don't have to do this, but we highly, highly recommend it for the same reasons that we recommend getting your own domain name and your own email address on your domain. You can use Get Oiling without doing these things that I've shared with you today. But if you are really invested in improving your deliverability, these are, in my eyes, I believe, really non-negotiables. Okay? So if you want to know where you can go and update the information on your site, you can go over here uh, to uh, click your name, right? When you're logged into your dashboard, up in the top right corner, you'll see uh, your name. When you click it, that's where you can actually go and modify 
all of this information. Do make sure that you have your name. Obviously, Jane's last na name is not L, but this is a dummy account. So you are going to want to have your name here. Uh, you're going to want to have your own email address, uh, the website phone number. Once you have a phone number set up with Get Oiling, you'll want to put that here. And then it is important that you have an accurate street address. Uh, this is something you're going to want to check your local um uh, your the local authorities where you live around uh, the spam and email laws, things like that. Uh, in a lot of cases, there is a requirement to have a full physical address uh, that uh, that you place here that's going to show up on your website and as well as in your emails that you send. Uh, this is a great opportunity if you don't have one yet to get yourself a virtual mailbox. If you would prefer to not use your home address, I certainly don't recommend you use your home address if uh, strangers on the internet are potentially going to be receiving your emails. Uh, so definitely do look into something like that if you don't have that yet. All right. Now, if you don't know about two-way texting, uh, you can click this chat icon right next to your name in the top right-hand corner. And if you haven't set it up yet, you'll see uh, that you can click OK to learn more, learn a little bit more about two-way texting. And when you get started, you can actually go and select your own phone number. You can uh, really customize it the way that you want. You can choose your area code and you can even choose combinations of numbers that could maybe spell something out, for instance, if that's something that you're into. So uh, there's some best practices that I think are also really important for you to keep in mind here. First, we wanna maintain a clean list and we want to segment that list with tags. Now, if you're new, let me break this down really briefly. Maintaining a clean list of subscribers, and this is for email and text, means that the people that you are sending emails or texts to are people who have explicitly said, I want to receive emails and texts from you. And they typically do that by going to your website and filling out a form, a landing page, or a form or an, on a page and get oiling, uh, where they're signing up to get something. And that is when that happens and it's tagging them with something like newsletter, for instance, right? Um, so maintaining a clean list means that, uh, for just as an example, you have in your virtual office uh, for Young Living, Lots of folks, hopefully, right, uh, who are customers of Young Living that are technically in your business. Now, the bigger your business gets, the more likely it is that there are people who are on that list from your VO who don't know you and have never consented to receiving email and text from you. Having a clean list means sending emails out to people only, only people who have said yes to hearing from you. And so what would not be a clean list is your VO file technically, right? So while you do, yes, have legal permission to reach out to these folks, the best practice there is actually to send them an invitation so they can say yes. They can click a link and email to opt themselves in, or they can go to a landing page and put in their name and email and consent to receiving more communications from you, right? So that's what it means. And segmenting with tags basically means that you know who is who on your list. So may maybe some folks are your Young Living customers, maybe some are Young Living leads, maybe you have another type of business or offering uh, that you provide and you have a separate list yet for those folks. Maybe some people are on both, maybe some are on one but not the other, whatever that might mean. And then when you have your list segmented with tags, you're then able to send only the most relevant information to the people who said yes to it. So for instance, keeping your list clean here for the folks who are on your VO file, who said yes to receiving weekly or monthly emails from you, you're gonna filter for those people using the filter feature in your Get Oiling Contact Manager. Then you're gonna send your newsletter weekly or monthly to those people. Uh, you would not be sending your weekly or monthly Young Living newsletter to people who are maybe leads who didn't say yes to getting that kind of information. Or if you have maybe a massage business, for instance, and you keep your list in your Get Oiling system as well, you wouldn't be sending your Young Living newsletter to your massage clients unless those massage clients have also said yes to getting the Young Living newsletter info. Make sense? So we want to keep our list organized, keep it clean with permission in all of those different places. Another thing you wanna make sure that you do is avoid language that triggers spam filters. So this is going to be act now, buy now, only this much money, right? That kind of language that's very promotional 
is going to have a higher chance of hitting the spam filters. And there's easy ways to search for this. There's not a definitive list, but there are some very solid lists and best practices. Free is also a tricky word, um, depending on how you've placed it in a sentence, right? Uh, but really the best practice here is to write like you're writing to a friend. If it doesn't sound like you're sending it to a friend, maybe don't send, right? Always check your work and make sure that what you're reading really sounds like something that you would send to another human on purpose and not just, you know, to a, you know, blind faced group of people that you hope might buy something, right? Really, you want to be personal about this. And if you are in the way that you write, you'll tend to be delivered better, right? You also want to include alternate text if you're using images. This is an important thing for uh, deliverability for email specifically. If you have images, add alt text. And I actually think that this is something that you should do across your website as well, um, in particular on pages that are meant to be public or uh, publicly found, publicly searchable. That's going to improve your SEO as well. So just generally speaking for authority, um, include alternate text. I'll show you what that looks like in just a moment. And then finally, uh, you wanna send a preview to yourself before you broadcast. And then if you wanna take this up one more level, you can go to mail-tester.com and it's free. Uh, you can uh, follow the instructions on that page and you can actually send a version of the email that you're composing uh, and allow them to score it for you and give you some feedback, okay? So this is what it looks like to add alternative text to images. You're simply gonna click the text, the image that you've included in your email. When you click it, it's gonna show alternative text and then it'll give you a field where you can pop something in. And so you would simply just describe whatever that image is. And it would actually show up uh, in the instance of someone who maybe isn't receiving um, pictures right? Pictures don't download when they open their email. A lot of folks do this who are maybe preserving their data, for instance. Um, they need to see what that picture is supposed to be, right? Otherwise, it's just going to say like image didn't load or something weird like that. It's not the experience that you want them to have. So in this case, Jane has a signature photo. So it looks like she's signing off and there's a picture of her. But in the event that this image doesn't load, it'll show her name, right? So that's just an example here in email. And then if you want to send yourself a preview, and I always recommend that you do this so that you can see what it's going to look like when your people see it, send a preview. It's a button that's right down here at the bottom before you send it off, and you can do this in campaigns as well. Now, some additional best practices for text. We want to make sure that when people opt in for text, they know that they are opting in for text. So for instance, if you are using a landing page uh, or a page with a lead form, if you are including a, um, a field to put their phone number in, and you intend to send them text messages, make sure that they know that when they're signing up, right? Maybe use the specific language, like if you would like to also get my text updates, be sure to include your phone number, right? Just put that on the page so that people know that that's what they're doing. Then once they've done that, please only make sure that they are getting what they asked to receive, right? So if they signed up for an event and you were sending them text reminders for that event, unless that person also said, send me, you know, an educational something about the supplements you use, only if they said yes about that thing, should you send them a text campaign that teaches them about sulfurzyme or whatever it is that you want to share, right? only send them stuff that they said yes to. And definitely on the first message, and certainly do this more often than just the first message, include specific language like reply stop to opt out on confirmation. Now we do have the ability in text uh, campaign setup to provide a different keyword that people can use uh, to opt them out of that specific campaign or move them on to the next one. But, um, Per the messaging provider that we use, it's called Twilio, it is important for you to use this specific language at least once a year with somebody who is on your text list. So just make sure that you've got this here so that people can say stop, they can opt out, and they know that they can, all right? And then again, if you aren't texting often, then you do want to make sure that this is included, again, 
every now and then, right? So maybe once every six months or so. And uh, and definitely, definitely don't use link shorteners like Bitly, right? Uh, where they you take like a, a super long link and uh, and it shortens it for you. Do not use those. Uh, those will get filtered uh, and not delivered uh, via text. And um, and just so you know, when you put something like a super long link into your Get Oiling, we actually have short links and we shorten them for you. So you don't have to worry about that. Uh, another best practice that I recommend here as well is to design your campaigns deliberately for text. If you want the experience to be a mobile one, when somebody opts in for information, you want to design the experience for mobile. If you want to make sure that it's got the best deliverability, you don't want to just set something up for email and then just say, oh, well, they, they can just get it as text if they want it as text. Um, you can do that. It is something that's possible. But in terms of best practices, if you want to improve and preserve your deliverability, then you want to take these other factors into account here. You're not going to include this reply stopped out uh, to opt out verbiage in the email that you're thinking is going to send via text if they don't receive the email, right? So what I like to do is to have an email only campaign or even a text only campaign uh, based on the experience that I want the user to have. But that's not the only way, right? You can actually have an email preferred or a text preferred. And so what this means is, is that they will send, um, if let's just say for instance, for whatever reason, their email, um, that you maybe their inbox is full, they're not receiving anything. You can, if you choose email preferred, it, the system will send it to text if we have a phone number for them, right? Or if this is text, preferred, it is text-based, but it'll go to their email if for whatever reason it doesn't reach their phone, right? And then if you're using an email or sorry, a campaign that delivers via email and text, just make sure that the, um, the messages that are going to send via text and the ones that are going to send via email are specified. This one is going to go out text only, or this one is going to go out email only, or this is email preferred, text preferred, etc. <clears throat> so an example of this would be Maybe you have a challenge that you're running where you're going to send a weekly email um, on Sundays that gives a recap of the week. Uh, and then um, every day, maybe you're sending a quick little text check-in, right? So when you're setting that campaign up, it's going to be set up for email and text, but then the, ind the individual messages, you're going to say, this one is for email, and then this one is for text. What you don't wanna do is have people get the exact same message via email and text at the same time. That is a quick path to getting unsubscribed on both ends and really damaging your um, credibility with the, the email and text servers. So with these things out of the way, and I understand it's a lot, but those are the things that you, you should basically, like you as somebody who does the work that you do now using this system and, and working this way uh, online, these are things that you want to be really making an effort to remember and learn. But with that out of the way, Let's learn how we can improve our deliverability without having to think that much about it <laughs> because AI can do that thinking for us. Just remember those basic best practices and how you set things up and moving forward, AI can handle the rest. All right, so let's start with email. An example here is going to be, um, we have created a lead magnet. We want to generate leads online, right? And so uh, we're going to write a campaign message that's going to go out to people who have said yes, they put in their name and email. It's gonna go out to them right after they have requested my free habit guide. So we have two options here. The first one is maybe you already wrote this and you want to see if AI can make it better, right? So in this case, you would write your email as you would like to say it and then ask AI to suggest ways to improve it. And this of course is a pathway for you to go to your existing work and modify it, make it better. And the other option here would be to bring your criteria to AI and say, write it for me. So let's go through these. So the first option is you take your pre-written message. I already know what I wanna say. Let's see if it can help me say it better, all right? So first we wanna start with who and what this email is for. And so we're going to say to the AI, I'm writing an email to send to my subscribers after they've opted in to receive my free guide on creating better habits. Then we're going to indicate that you are including the contents of the email. So we'll say here is the email, subject line, and then the body, okay? So this is the email you've already written. We're just gonna paste it in there. Then we're going to tell it what we want it to do. In this case, we're gonna say, how can this message be modified to improve deliverability 
open rate, and click-through rate. I know you guys came here today for deliverability, but we're also going to improve the other things while we're at it because we want people to actually open emails and then click the link that's inside them. Now, when you use this prompt where we ask it, how can this message be modified? I want to make a quick note. Sometimes the AI will return a list of, uh, of things that you can, uh, bullet points that you can follow to improve what you've already written. If you want it specifically to rewrite it for you, you can simply say, rewrite this message to improve deliverability, open rate, and click-through rate, okay? So this is what it'll look like. I'm writing an email to send to subscribers after opting in to receive my free guide on creating better habits. Here's the email, paste it in. How can this message be modified to improve deliverability, open rate, and click-through rate? Then we click write, and it gives us a pretty great response, right? It's filled out a little bit more. It's actually given, I think, a better subject line. Uh, it's got a really nice uh, sort of flow here. And it's, of course, including spaces for them to get the guide that they've opted in for. Pretty good, right? Now, if you want AI to just write it for you, you just want to bring your criteria, you could do this first. Same as before, start with who it's for and what the email is for. So I'm writing an email to send to my subscribers after they've opted in to receive my free guide on creating better habits. Then tell it to write the email and give it parameters. So we'll say, please compose the email, including subject line, optimize for deliverability, open rate, and click-through rate, and include the following. Have them click a link to download the guide they signed up for, have them hit reply and tell me what new habits they are hoping to initiate and if there are any habits they are hoping to get rid of, and then let them know that helping people connect to simpler paths to creating the life they want is one of the things I love most about what I do and that I'd love to help them. All right, so that's what I do. I tell them these things. I've given you the prompt here. Now we ask it to write, and here it is. And they did a really nice job. <laughs> so you could also just give it parameters. So if you are in a place where you know what you you know what you want the email to accomplish, you know who it's for, and you know the context, provide those things and tell AI to just write it for you. I do recommend, of course, and you see the little triangle warning sign up here, you need to review what they put here for accuracy and compliance um, because AI is not perfect. And it also doesn't perfectly speak like you, nor does it perfectly understand Young Living compliance rules. So make sure that you review what's here, make it sound like you, and you're good to go. Now let's get on to text. But So the example here is we're going to write an SMS, and that's just a text message. So an MMS is a, um, a message that would have like an image with it, okay? So I'm telling it I'm writing an SMS message with a link to join a live call to send to subscribers who signed up to attend a workshop. So I have an event, and I have a text campaign that's going to go out, or I'm scheduling a text broadcast to go out uh, to remind people an hour before our Zoom call that it's time to join, right? And, and to provide the link to them. So we have two options, just as before, we can write our message as we'd like to say it, then as, ask AI how we can make it better, right? And of course you can use this approach to uh, modify the existing messages you have in your system. Or you could simply, if you're starting something new, tell AI what you need and have it write for you. So if you're writing the text first, use this prompt. We're gonna start with who and what the text is for. We tell it I'm composing an SMS message to send to my subscribers who signed up to join a live workshop. The message will share a Zoom link an hour before the call begins. Then we wanna indicate that we are including, uh, what we are including in the contents of the message. So we're gonna say, here's the message, and then we paste the message. Then we tell it what we want it to do. We ask, how can this message be modified to improve deliverability, open rate, and click-through rate? Or if you want to get even more specific, if you don't want it to give you recommendations at all, you just want it to rewrite it for you, you can say, rewrite this message to improve deliverability, open rate, and click-through rate. All right, so it'll look a little bit like this. Great, and here it is. It even included an awesome little emoji here. Uh, so it did give us a revision. Voila, there you go. And a best practice, just remember if, um, you know, if, if this person has never received a text from you before, and this is the first time you're sending a text, it is not a bad idea to include uh, reply stop to opt out, 
right? Just as a general practice. So uh, if you want AI to write the text for you, right? You don't have it already written, then do this. Start again, just with who and what the email's for. This is the same circumstance as prior. We're gonna then tell it to write the email and give it parameters, or sorry, write the text. <laughs> so we're gonna write an SMS message. Uh, this is what we all want it to do. We're telling it what to do. Write an SMS message, optimize for delivery, open rate and click through rate that reminds them about the workshop and shares the Zoom link at 2 p.m. Eastern. The Zoom workshop is, is on creating a habit journal and here's the link. So that's what it says. And here's what it says. Not bad, right? Now let's talk about error codes. Have any of us maybe raise your hand, have you ever gotten an error code? If you look in your past actions on your contact files, you, sometimes you might see if you've sent out a text message to someone, you might see an error code returned. And I'll show you what that looks like here in just a moment. So you can actually see under past actions, you'll see the date. And then this says text delivery error. It'll have the person's phone number and then it'll give you the error message. You can click on it and actually see what that message is. Okay. So if you ever see something like this, here's what you can do. Now this error code comes from Twilio. So you get oiling the texting that you're using is actually coming from a text provider called Twilio. So if we go to Twilio's uh, support website, so you go to support.twilio.com and you search for that error code. So this error code is um, 30007. So if we go and put that into Twilio, then you'll actually see that um, they have an article here and you can read a little bit more about it, why this might've happened. And what happened in this case is that this message was filtered. Uh, and so messages get filtered for a number of reasons. And this actually will tell all of those to you. It could be identified as spam or flagged as object objectionable. Uh, so you read this and you go, okay, well, what can I do? And if you see down here, it says, how do I prevent my messages from being filtered? So I wanna click this and see what they want from me in order to not have my messages get filtered. So I'm gonna open that up. I'm gonna copy this because here's what we want. We want to tell AI to rewrite our message for us, right? So that it's better, right? So that it is not going to get filtered. But here's the thing, and this is an important thing for you to know when using AI. AI cannot browse the internet. It cannot read a website, right? It can't, if you send it a link, you can say, follow the guidelines here. It doesn't do that. So you are going to have to copy and paste the information that you want it to follow, okay? So it's, it's just an extra step, but think about it like this. You are delegating your task to someone who can do it in a couple of seconds, right? <laughs> Whereas you could hire someone, train them for six months, and then, um, you know, and, and then hope that this, uh, this task doesn't take seven hours. So you can go and copy the information that the AI needs to know, combine it with a couple of prompts and get the outcome that you're looking for. So here's how we set up the prompt. So first we say, I did this, I got an error code, enter the number from Twilio, right? So this is the message, meaning this is the text message that I sent that got this error code. The error message means, right? And then you paste in what it means. And then you say, um, in this particular instance, if there are any guidelines that Twilio is sharing that would be helpful for the AI to know, then you copy and paste that information into the AI prompt, and then you tell it what you want it to do. So this is what it looks like. I tried sending the following text message to a customer, but got the error message from Twilio. This is the message I sent. Ready for our workshop. See you in an hour. Read more at. The error message means I pasted it. And then based on the error message and guidelines above, write a text broadcast that shares the link to the Zoom call that's about to, about to begin that would not be blocked or filtered. So this is basically how the prompt works. Here's what I did. Here's what I got back. This is what I sent. Here are the guidelines. Rewrite it based on the guidelines. That's what we're telling AI to do. It is long. I did have to paste something in here, but you can see what I did, right? So I've shared some of the best practices from Twilio or the guidelines from Twilio, told them about the error message, shared what I sent, 
told them how it all happened. And then essentially down here at the bottom, I said, based on the error message and guidelines above, write a text broadcast that shares the link to the Zoom call that's about to begin that would not be blocked or filtered. And here you go. Hello, our workshop is about to start. Join us through this link. We hope to see you there to stop receiving these messages. Reply stop. Complies with Twilio's guidelines, right? And so this is going to be less likely to be filtered. All right, so now let's get into some live help and Q&A if you guys have questions. I know that's a lot to digest, but just remember at the top of the call where I shared those list of things that you wanna make sure you do first, if you have done those things, right? If you have gotten your, your phone number set up, your email, your, you know, your domain, you've gotten in touch with Colin here who does the amazing stuff to make sure your emails get delivered on the back end, uh, then it's really just a couple of check boxes we need to follow. Write like you're writing to a friend, and, uh, and and run it through AI, tell it what it needs to know and say, what's the best way for me to do this, right? Or if, if you get an error, uh, if you're the type of person that shoots first and asks questions later, uh, then you can of course feed that error into AI and learn how you can improve in the future. So if you are the type of person that's a little timid and it needs to be perfect first, tell AI what you need and let it write it for you. Or again, if you are, if you're more of an act first and then learn from it, you can do that with this as well. So let's get into some of these questions. Do please make sure that we get them into the Q and A, uh, just so we don't miss them, and we can um, and, and we can go through these. Okay, so um, Myrna, can I use my project broadcast number in Get Oiling? You can actually port your number over to us if you would like to use uh, Get Oiling for your text and have everything under one roof. Uh, all you need to do is just get in touch with our team and we can get you. Uh, going with those steps. And that goes for any, um, well, most uh, VoIP numbers that you might have. So if you have a Google Voice number, sometimes uh, I've ported a Google Voice number before and it took uh, ages. <laughs> so, uh, but that was connecting to Verizon, which I think was probably the problem. <laughs> but uh, but we can get Google Voice numbers as well. And I don't think that they uh, cause the same kind of issue that I experienced. Um, Deborah, do we have to use the Get Oiling website? Could we have our own website to use Get Oiling? Um, that's a good question. Uh, it's a yes and a no. Um, it depends on what you want, right? So if you have an existing website that um, that you love, that you don't want to get rid of for some reason or another, uh, maybe you're using it for other functions and purposes, you can link to your Good Oiling website in a number of different places, or you can put forms from your Good Oiling website onto that website, um, which is a little bit more complicated and not necessarily something I recommend. You would, you would, would, It'd be better just send them to things on your Good Oiling website. Um, it really depends. And I'm happy to, to chat with you about this. Actually, if you um, if you want, you can come out and talk. We have plenty of time for that. If you want to just raise your hand, if you are able to talk, just pop your hand up here on Zoom and we can kind of talk through that together. Um, the no part of, of my answer, because it is a yes and a no. Uh, the no part is if you're really trying to create something that's unified and simple for how you run your business, meaning um, where you collect your leads on your website is also the same place where um, you, basically if, if you want to be able to get names and emails, phone numbers, what have you from your website, then you're going to want to eventually move over to Get Oiling uh, because having a website that is not with Get Oiling means having to perform a lot of steps manually on the back end to get things to connect. And that's a life that you get to leave behind when you come to us and you have everything here. Um, you can have a website uh, with us that functions basically the same as it would on any other platform. So can you use other websites with Get Whaling? Absolutely. This, that's a, a transition strategy a lot of people will use. But what we ultimately find is if you are not trying to add more hours and more challenges to your business, you'll eventually want to move everything over. So um, again, super, super happy to chat with you. OK, um, can Get Whaling use WordPress? So actually, uh, with uh, Get Whaling, you don't need WordPress. No, uh, Deborah, you actually, uh, everything is here. We already have a blog built in. Uh, it has the same SEO capability that WordPress does. Um, basically, our entire website platform is going to, um, it's, it's going to provide you everything that WordPress does and then some. Uh, because with us, we have integrated on the back end 
all of your um, your email, uh, your texting. Uh, you can see who's doing what. You've got your private member area included. With Get Oiling, you have you know 27 different services that you could be paying separately for all in one place that's programmed to go together. And typically when you have a WordPress website, you have a really high expense of, uh, of tying together all of these things because you don't know that someone from your list actually visited and clicked on a page on your WordPress site because it's not plugged in together, right? You need to buy a thing to buy a thing to buy a thing to make that work, right? So um, we would love to actually um, with your daughter, um, I'd be happy to chat with her uh, and you know answer any questions that she has. She's certainly welcome to reach out to our support team. Um, in terms of using graphics and things like that, you can you can do anything with us uh, that you could do anywhere else. It's it is a slightly different interface because you know the softwares are not the exact same, uh, but you can create something that is virtually the same thing. Um, you just need to know what you're looking for. Okay, let's see. And thank you for that question. And, and please do feel free to send her our way. And, and we're happy to help uh, get her acquainted with what we have here. Um, okay, Myrna says, I created a logo, photo and name in Canva for my email signature. Can I add the inserted name email phone to the email signature? Or does it need to be added to each email? I don't see my website in the list. So uh, Myrna, what you can do, and let me let me open up and make sure that I am in Jane's account before I go showing you this. So to create a signature, let me share. To create a signature that will go into every email that you send out, including your campaign messages, you're gonna go under contacts, you're gonna go to settings, and then you're gonna go to general settings. You could also just go up here and type in signature, and you can see that it's right here. And that is it, right? So what I've done here is I've included an image and you can see that we have alternative text. We'll put in Jane. And so that's her sort of moniker. And then this, my name, my phone, my email, my website, these are all from, let me just increase the size of this a bit. Um, these are all uh, codes that we have in the system that are going to show anything that you have here. So your name, email address, phone, et cetera, as well as your website. So that's how I have this set up. You could obviously just literally type these in the way that you want them. And then I've got links to the blog and uh, different offers. So um, so you can add it into the, um, the image. Uh, I don't really recommend that though, but just like I mentioned earlier, um, some people don't, uh, maybe if they're getting email on their phone, sometimes they don't get their images uh, downloaded. And so they're not gonna see what they need to see. Plus, especially on mobile, um, typically an email address or a phone when it shows up on mobile is something that's clickable. So somebody can just touch your number and call you, right? Uh, or they could uh, click your, uh, your email address and email you. So, um, it, so right here, I, we actually don't have that here. And it's probably for good reason because this is something that actually shows up on the website. Um, or sorry, this, it's something that like, it's not a message you're sending to somebody, but um, but where you're gonna find these prompts, if you really want to use them, just pretend like you're writing an email. Uh, and so we'll just go over here to messages and you'll see, it's right here, this little text bubble, you can see all of these. So there's, um, so my, my, uh, phone number, for instance, right? Voila. Um, or if you want your Young Living member number, that's actually something that populates here in Get Oiling as well. So that's all here. Uh, and again, you don't have to use these. And you can see that this email signature populated here, that's what we were just looking at on the other page. So it will show up here um, in your campaigns. Um, just sign off. Uh, in your campaigns, you're going to go, um, if you're writing a campaign, um, you'll say uh, best and then hit enter a couple of times, and then your signature is going to automatically apply if you have it set up in that contact settings field uh, that I just showed you. 
Okay, how can I align a graphic in a saved reply so that the text is beside example, my young living welcome and my good oiling? Yeah, this is actually pretty simple. Here, let's just go back here and let me, um, here, I'll actually do this in a blog post so that you can maybe see this better. So it's actually a setting on the image itself. So here's here's an image. And if we click display, there's inline and break text. Right now, this is break text. But if I go inline and I backspace, you'll see that if I backspace this, it actually starts to run together, right? So this image has the text next to it. So it's a, it's a matter of just changing the setting right here, the display setting of the image. And so that's going to be in a saved reply. It also works the same way in a blog post. OK, next question. AJ, do you, uh, do you do Get Oiling website audits? A second set of eyes on my website might be helpful in catching my mistakes. Uh, so we can do a, a general review. Uh, you can go to uh, getoiling.com slash website review, and you can sign up for a future live session, and, and we can certainly walk through that together. Um, this is something that uh, if you wanted something more in-depth, I would definitely go to our concierge uh, page, getoiling.com slash concierge, and that is something um, that we could maybe look at in greater depth with you as well. But uh, if you wanted to do that together on a live call and have the community benefit from the feedback, um, then, uh, then of course, you could use the website review option uh, on one of our Thursday calls. Lynn asks, does Get Oiling have an ability to use chat GPT within the website areas such as email, blog, campaigns, and page creation? So I highly recommend, Lynn, that you check out one of our more recent trainings on our YouTube channel. We'll go to youtube.com slash getoiling. And this AI feature that I've just been talking about is actually what you're asking for. So the answer is yes. Um, check out this one here, how to use AI to grow young living. And then next time you're logged into your Get Oiling, head over here and go to Write with AI. And you can use it just like ChatGPT. Or if you're in a blog post here, you're, you're writing a blog post we can actually ask AI to write here as well, right? So definitely consider doing this. So hit C, it says write with AI. We're gonna click him and we're gonna say, I'm writing a blog post. About natural home cleaning products that don't disrupt hormones. Please write a greater than 1,000 word article outlining four ways to clean up your kitchen cabinets and ditch nasty cleaners. How about that? Then we'll hit write and uh, it's just like ChatGPT. And you can actually paste it straight into your Get Oiling from here. And the cool thing about this and why it's actually, I would say, even better than ChatGPT uh, is that it already understands some context. It knows you're a Young Living brand partner that's looking to grow your business. Uh, so this is, uh, it's often going to potentially include references to Young Living products uh, and, uh, and, and verbiage about and recommending uh, Young Living for the different things that you're writing about. I don't know what's going on with me right now. It's usually my browser that's doing this. But anyway, you you write and it will provide you with a response. Let me see. Actually never had that happen before. And sometimes it depends on your computer or what you've asked it to do. Um, this is the reason why I use screenshots today for, for demonstrating AI. Because sometimes you just don't know how long the guy wants to take to write, but it's always going to be faster than you would have taken if you wrote a thousand words uh, or if you were delegating that to someone else. So, oh, awesome. I'm so glad that you found that out today. 
Cool, cool. Does anyone else have questions or would you like to come out and chat through something or look through something together? Uh, matter of fact, uh, you know, oh, here, actually, let me go show you real quick um, what it said. Voila. Here we go. Whole thing here. Dish soap. And it actually, again, it's it's talking about thieves. It's talking about um, essential oils. Lots of great stuff in here. So there you go. It's like your own chat GPT bot, but for your Get Oiling website and uh, and written for you from the voice of a brand partner. Awesome. Do we have any other questions or requests to review your work? Let's see if I missed any questions here in the chat. I don't think I do. Awesome. Well, if we're good to go, we don't have any questions left, then I will let you guys go on and start um, improving those emails that you're sending out, getting those campaigns done. And I hope you're having a gorgeous day where you are and you get to go out and enjoy it. So uh, we'll be back here same time next week where you will get to meet some of the folks on our incredible concierge team. So stick around for that. And uh, we will see you then. Have a great week, everybody.